Uh, this is Wednesday of Sixth Pentecost, and uh, we are, our service is a service of morning prayer, right? Two. It's on page eighty in the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, or in your electronic um, Common Prayer app. Um, it is under Office, Daily Office, Morning Prayer, right? Two. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Um, your mercy is everlasting. Come, let us adore you. And the Vanity on page 92. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us Come before your presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to you with psalms. For you are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills is yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before you, our maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to your voice. Uh, notice that I have uh, changed this somewhat by directing it to God as opposed to being about God. So you, instead of his, uh, avoiding the, uh, the exclusive use of the pronouns. Um, our psalm today is Psalm 38. This is the third in chronology of the penitentials. Um, it is a psalm of, um, of anguish, really, and, um, and reproach. Um, o Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, do not punish me in your wrath, for your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me like a heavy burden. They are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes has gone from them. My friends and companions draw back from my afflictions. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me uh, speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth there is no defense. For in you, O Lord, I have fixed my hope. You are my. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, I do not let them rejoice at my expense. Those who gloat over me, um, when my foot slips, truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty. And many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay um, evil for good slander me because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. So it does end in hope, even though it's pretty self-reproachful. Um, our first reading is from... Um, the book of Joshua. Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out from uh, Shittim with all the uh, Israelites, and they came to the Jordan, and they camped there before the the uh, before crossing the river. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people. 
When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place, follow it, so that you may um, know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, a distance of about um, 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To the uh, priests, Joshua said, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in front of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in front of the people. The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I am to be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests to bear the Ark of the Covenant. And when you come to the edge of the waters of Jordan, um, you shall uh, stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the Israelites, draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Um, Joshua said, by this you shall know that among you is the living God who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, uh, Jer Girgashites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes, one from each tribe. And when the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off and they shall stand uh, in a single heap. Okay, and the responsory canticle is Serge Illuminare, number 11, on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land. Deep gloom enshrouds the people. For over you the Lord will rise, and uh, God's glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and rulers to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of, of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit in the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will uh, separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the Lord will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took, me, took care of me. I was um, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer the Lord, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that um, 
we uh, saw you sick or in prison and visited you. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire prepared uh, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Hear that, O oh, governing people of the administration of this country. Um, naked, and you did not uh, give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we were, saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer me, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Yes, uh, we haven't been reading much about that with our Know Nothing um, administration. Okay, so our responsory canticle is 16 on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. God has come to God's people and set them free. God has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of God's servant David. Through God's holy prophet, God promised of old that God would save us from our enemies and from the hands of those who hate us. God promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember God's holy covenant. For this is the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship God without fear, holy and righteous in God's sight all the days of our life. And you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Apostles' Creed on 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, um, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. 
Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our canticle, our, our excuse me, our colic is colic uh, for proper 10. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have a colic for grace today. Lord God, almighty, everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we especially remember those who uh, have been ordained recently. There are a bunch of them in West Missouri and Northern Michigan uh, and other places. Um, well, uh, we pray for the dead to begin with. Um, we especially remember those who have died from coronavirus in this time of pandemic. Um, we remember, of course, everybody who's, who's died in the last seven months, uh, or the first seven months of, of 2020. And we remember our own dead. I remember especially Larry and uh, Marion, and Russell, and Joseph, and Betty, and Barbara, and all our forebears. I remember those who are sick. I especially remember um, our organist and hard worker at um, St. Peter's in Harrisonville, Shelley, um, fighting cancer for many years. And uh, Steve and Joe, Eric and Ann. and all those who are fighting disease in this time. And blessings, we ask for those who are ministering to those who are diseased, protect them, especially from COVID-19. And we give thanks, and we give thanks today, especially for rain. We were not really supposed to get it, but we did. We got blasted pretty well, and it just stopped after raining for probably six hours. Oh, the thirsty ground needed it much. Um, and for that, we are very grateful. Um, we are also grateful for, for life and... Uh, I ask especially today to my sister traveling to Columbia uh, to visit her, well, her grandchildren and her son and, and daughter-in-law especially, um, but uh, watch over her in her driving and return today with her carload of gifts for her beloved family. 
and a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you um, humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Have a good day.